Automatic mixers are mixers that have the ability to gate off, reduce, or control the level of unused microphones. They can maintain unity gain at the output by compensating levels depending on the number of microphones, and they have the means to allow only one microphone to be active per source. There are two main types of automatic mixers, gating automatic mixers and gain sharing automatic mixers. The operation principle of a gating automatic mixer is based on gating off or reducing the level of unused microphones. Since the input is being controlled by a gate, there is a threshold setting that is automatically adjusted to background noise. They have the means to prevent two microphones from gating onto the same signal, and the output level is adjusted to compensate for the number of open microphones. Getting automatic mixers use the microphone's inputs to detect background noise and automatically set the threshold. If all microphone levels are below the threshold, they are kept gated off. Once the level of one input is above the threshold, that channel will be gated on. If a second signal raises above the threshold, that second channel will also be gated on. The output level of the mixer will remain always at unity gain. If the level of that second signal drops below threshold, the channel is gated off. If at any point the background noise in the room changes, the automatic mixer will readjust the threshold accordingly. This should not affect normal gating on and off of microphones as they are being used. Gating automatic mixers have certain pros and cons. They can limit the number of open microphones which can reduce the background noise. They usually have very fast response and they can provide direct outputs that are ideal for mix minus systems. But in certain cases, background noise level can change as microphones gate on or off. Improper settings can lead to breathing or pumping. That is the noise we hear when microphones gate on and off very quickly. Improper settings can also cause the first syllables to get chopped off, and they may pop as microphones are gated on. These block diagrams represent a single channel in Biamp's gating automatic mixer. The first signal that signal encounters is the mute button. After that, the signal is diverted to a gate and a sidechain threshold detect process. This process identifies if the incoming signal is background noise or a valid signal and establishes the threshold for the gate. After the gate is the input level control. This control is after the gate, so any adjustments doesn't affect proper operation. The last block is Noma Attenuation Block. This block, in conjunction with the other channels of the automatic mixer, keeps account of how many microphones are active and how much attenuation must be provided to maintain unity gain. Lastly, after all the processing has been done, the signals are mixed together. Doing the mix as the last step allows us to have fully processed audio for every input as a direct output for special applications like mix minus. When using automatic mixers, there are certain do's and don'ts. Getting automatic mixers work based on input level. That means that proper gain structure is essential for proper operation and optimal functionality. These mixers are the ideal tool for voice applications where only a few microphones are going to be used at any given time, like distance conferencing, meeting rooms, or training rooms. Because the way they work, gating automatic mixers don't work very well for live sound or music applications. Also, any microphone level control must be done after the gates in gating automatic mixer. That is to maintain proper gating operation.